Hi there, got another really useful little web tool for you guys to try. Um, this one's called Linoit. This is uh, an excellent resource, um, works very, very well when pupils have their own devices. Um, free apps as well for Android and iPad, which make it even more functional in that regard. Um, but it's a really, really good little uh, resource for um, collaborative work, particularly brainstorming research tasks, that sort of thing. Um, free to set up, free to use, um, and uh, and very straightforward. So I'm just going to take you through some of the kind of the the, the features that um, that that it has. Um, it's very similar to Padlet, which you may well have come across before in the past. Um, I generally prefer this to Padlet. I think it's a bit more visual, a bit uh, a, a bit more functional as well than than Padlet. Um, so anyway, when you go to to Lino it. Um, you are confronted with the usual sort of login screen like this. You can link it to Twitter, Facebook, Google if you have those accounts and want to do that. Um, otherwise, you can click sign up at the bottom here and it's the usual sort of routine, um, adding an email address, username, password, that sort of thing. Um, when you have created all of that um, and it, you go through to the login screen, this is uh, this is your kind of your your page, your dashboard, I suppose that that uh, that starts you off. And what we're going to do from here is create a new canvas. So what we will be asked for in a moment when we get here, okay, is a name for the canvas. So I'll call this one demonstration. We then have various options for the background of the canvas. Um, I normally stick with this kind of this corkboard effect one. I think that's the kind of the nicest look to go with with the sticky notes. Um, but as you can see, there are, there are other ones there for you if, if you're feeling particularly colorful. And um, one that you, you could find useful as well is the upload an image option here. Um, if you had, for instance, um, an image of a map or a diagram or something like that that needed labeling, then using that as the background image might well be quite effective. The pupils could then put sticky notes on top of it, which relates to um, the, the the picture beneath. So so that that could be something that um, that you might want to use. I think if you're doing a labeling activity, I would suggest using ThingLink rather than Linoit. Um, it's a little bit more powerful, but um, but the option is there if you want. Um, access to the canvas. Uh, you need to make sure, particularly if it's well, if you want it to be collaborative, you need to make sure that the bottom one is ticked, whereby everyone can post stickies. And as you can see, you've then got a number of different uh, different options that um that the, that you can. Uh, kind of tick or untick depending on how you actually want to set up this activity. Um, I'm generally going to leave them all ticked. Um, leaving the top one ticked is particularly nice. It, it tells you when somebody has added something to the canvas. So it's, it's quite nice for you as the teacher to keep a bit of an eye about what, what's going on and what's been added. When you're done with all of that, you click on create at the bottom and that will hopefully take us through. There we go. And it will show us our, our blank canvas that, uh, that, that we can start adding notes to. Uh, now, you do have a little kind of couple of little window docs down here, if I just open these out. Um, this, this one on the left will show you other um, canvases that you have, so you can switch between them if you want to. Um, and the one on the right, um, the, the calendar is if you assign dates to stickies, which I, I doubt you would use. But um, the, uh, the, the kind of the area on the left here is quite useful because it lets you navigate around the canvas and, and see what else is going on. Hide both of those away for the minute, though. Um, the main panel that you're going to be concerned about and the pupils are going to need is this one up at the top right. This is where the pupils can drag on the, the sticky notes that they want. Um, as you can see, there are four basic colors there. There are options to change them and add more. Um, you could perhaps uh, use one color for advantages, one color for disadvantages. You could uh, assign pupils groups and have each have a different color, that sort of thing. Um, so a, a little bit of extra functionality there. All the pupils do is they drag the note onto the canvas. It opens up a little window like this, asking for more details. So say that this is my first sticky. Um, you can tag them if you want to. Um, that's if you're doing quite a substantial research topic. You can you can tag them with, with various topics and so on. Um, one of the really nice features is that you can resize the font. Uh, you can also do this once the note has been created. So quite a useful exercise. For instance, if you want headers um, or titles for particular clusters of sticky notes. Um, also very useful if you wanted to perhaps change the size depending on the importance of a point within an argument or something like that. Um, so very simple and it kind of resizes as you can see in the window there to give you an idea about how big it will look. Uh, also options to recolor the text if you wanted to. Um, you can assign it an, an icon, uh, again, perhaps if you wanted to identify which pupils had added it, something like that. Um, a due date, uh, possibly if, if you wanted to assign that on, on a sticky note, um, then, then you could do, although again, as I said, I, I, I doubt. Um, I doubt you would use that a great deal. Um, and then you've also got various other sticky notes as well. So this is an option. You can go beyond the four that you just have on that little dock in the top right and choose various other colors. 
Um, when you're done with all of that lot, you click post and then the sticky appears. This is the banner that I was talking about telling you when something is added to your, uh, to your canvas. So you can continue to do this adding various text stickies. I'll demonstrate how you can do it with a, a different size on this one. Um, so you can see there that the kind of the, the text is different size. You can overlay one on the other like this and gently drag them around, rearrange them and so on as you want. Um, so that those are kind of basically adding uh, little text stickies to it. Um, you can also copy and paste a web link into a text sticky so that, uh, so that, that would then create a, a, a clickable link within the sticky note, which could be quite useful. Um, other features that you have as well is the ability to um, add a video. So if I take uh, this one, for instance, this is a YouTube video. If I choose the, the YouTube link there, then that kind of allows me to create um, a, a video sticky. Um, I can also uh, use this one, which is again quite nice. It allows me to um, add documents and so on to, um, to, my, uh, to my presentation. So take that one from there give it a, a moment or two to upload that was a fairly big file actually so that may take a little while um add a, a little bit of information about it uh, you know same sorts of tools as, as before we can post that um so you, you, you see you can kind of add them like this there's also the ability to add a picture um so we can add a picture to to our, our canvas as well um so lots of different options here, you can resize and all, all sorts of bits and pieces, you, you can play around with that. But um, I mean, I think one of the things that I, I do like um, about uh, Lino it relative to, to Padlet is the kind of the, the, the freedom and, and the, the very, very visual nature of, of what you are creating as, as you go about adding content to it. Um, this final one over here is a transparent sticky, um, which is quite useful if you're overlaying things, but but otherwise not not um, not not something I generally use very much. Um, so that's basically how you go about creating um, your, your canvas. As I said before, you can kind of move things around. Um, and as you can see at the moment, I'm only up in this very top left of the, the canvas. So there's quite a lot more space um, for, for me to add various uh, various little bits and pieces. And you can also move around using this, uh, this drag box at the bottom right as well. Another thing that's quite useful for a teacher is this button highlight new. Uh, that will show you um, the items which have been recently added. It will show you the 10 most recently added items in order um, and kind of hide out the uh, the others. So again, useful to see uh, kind of who, who's been doing what during during the lesson. So um, that's the kind of the, the, the main functionality in terms of how you actually go about creating a, uh, a canvas. Um, other nice things that you can do as well by clicking on the eye here, you can also get a direct link um, and you can also get an embed code, which um, as you're getting quite familiar with now, hopefully you can paste into a Firefly page and that will create um, an embedded window in a Firefly page and the pupils will actually be able to create their canvas live inside the Firefly page. So um, a, another useful little tool. Um, it's free, very easy to set up and, um, and hopefully something that you can find useful when doing research tasks with your classes.